Hi boys, welcome to another vlog, brand new video, Mount 3 of IKR, we're, we're in the car with Mr. Brindy Boy, the man himself, we're, we're just trying to, we're just making our way up now, we didn't, we didn't actually sleep over overnight this time because, well, it's a bit cold in January to be doing that. We, we got the trailer just out front here, so, yeah, um, hopefully it'll be a bit of a banger. Um, we got some big, big news today and big upgrades coming. Um, I will show you when we get there and we've got it fitted, but hopefully it will make it 10 times better and more interesting for today. But let's just jump straight to later on where we're at the track and we've got everything ready. Right, so boys, we're just about to start with flat this and I don't know if you can tell or not, but the big news is I have now got an Evo kit on my car. So it's going to be quite interesting to say the least. So there is my car. Obviously it's got the new car graphics. If you haven't already seen my Instagram or Facebook post or TikTok. Um, yeah, it's going to be quite interesting to say the least. Really looking forward to it. But yeah, um, first part, this might be a little bit wet. So we have to shut the wet tires on. So hopefully it won't be too bad. But yeah, let's just jump straight on track then and see what we can do. So here we go for the first practice session to kickstart IKR round 3 at Clay Pigeon Raceway then. And obviously, like I said then in the intro, it's my first time with an Evo kit. So I have no clue how this is going to go. Obviously, like I also said, we are on wet tyres. The track isn't too wet, it's mainly just a bit damp. So it's going to be quite difficult to get used to this and try and find the correct lines as... It's pretty dry and I could imagine some of the parts of the track is dry and you can take a bit of a dry line but the wets are going to overheat massively so I do try and hit as many puddles as possible down the inside. Hairpin was somewhere that I really struggled with as I didn't know if I should take a wet line or a dry line. Through there the wet line seemed like the best one so that's what I kept using throughout practice. But yeah, as you can see we got overtaken by someone there down our inside so maybe the inside is the best through the horseshoe section but now we will cut to my fastest lap through practice then as we start the lap now run down towards turn one i take it massively wide here to try and get a wet line and get on the dry part of the track as we head towards the chicane section it's very difficult for the chicane section i really need to work on that part in the rain but we get a fairly decent exit go down the inside to try and cool down the wet tires take a wet line through the hairpin section and we actually bog out of the exit there, which isn't great, so we might need to try and work on the setup change as we take a very wet line through there, take it nice and tight there as we watch that guy on our formation lap and he went quite tight through there. Through the final corner then, went quite wide there, once again, try and get a good exit, down the start front straight once again, and that was my fastest hot lap attempt then in practice. So yeah, I then dove back into the pits a bit earlier just because I think I had a bit of practice and the setup just wasn't working too well so I came back into the pits so we could see if we could try and work on a different setup for the wet and for qualifying. So boys, we've done practice, it's drying up slightly, still a little bit damp but I think qualifying is going to be on wet tyres, we've changed for a dry setup with wet tyres, uh, I'm probably going to gamble for the dry tyres in heat one, just see what happens, hopefully it'll pay off, I'm not too sure, but yeah, hopefully it'll be all good. So, obviously, we've got the car, same car, same chassis and everything, I need to spray the chassis uh, black and change the car graphics on the floor tray, but yeah, looking good, obviously, got the e-book kit now, so yeah, um, looking all good, and hopefully, we can have a better qualifying than practice. So now it's qualifying time, as you can see, everyone's already left the grid and gone out on track, we we're a bit late to the grid, just for the fact that we're doing some last minute changes. But nevertheless, we still had time. We only were about a minute late, so it wasn't too bad. Straight away coming in towards turn one, I knew it was gonna be dry lines, basically just on wet tires, because through turn one and through turn two and turn three, the chicane section, it just gripped. So I was about to start pushing, but as we come around the final corner to start my first hot lap, I noticed yellow flags out, and there's a tyre in the middle of the track there. Just on the left, you can see Nathan Bollard from LPR Racing actually was in the barrier. His wheel actually came off there, which is a bit strange. 
but nevertheless we come around to start our second lap then and as you can see Jack Gorin and his teammate Brad get past me there down the straight um, they are the two championship contenders so I really wanted to try and follow their lines and see what lines they were taking because with them being the two championship contenders what better people can I try and follow to get advice from but nevertheless they just flew away but I noticed their hairpin section was take a very wide line because it's still quite damp there so that's what I tried to do and now we will get a quick camera angle from the track side as we're about to start our fastest lap now through qualifying in towards turn one take a very nice dry line there as you can see there's a cart just ahead of me hopefully you won't block me up as we head in towards the chicane section very nicely take dry lines through there obviously the tires are going to start overheating at this point because i'm on the dry part of the circuit the guy ahead of me actually takes a wet line there and i tried to take the dry line and as you can see it just did not work out for me i just did not get the exit i wanted to everywhere else was completely dry so I kind of messed up a little bit there, if I took a wet line through the hairpin I think I could have got a much better lap time but nevertheless I seem to have nailed it every other corner as we come down the start from the straight once again to finish my fastest hot lap attempt in qualifying and that was about it really, uh, we managed to actually catch down one of the dry runners as you can see he was flying through the dry part of the track but as soon as he got to the hairpin look how much time he lost, he tried to take a wet line I also took that same line and look at my exit compared to him I just flew past him and got past so yeah I think it helped that my tyres did degrade a little bit they looked completely ruined after this session so yeah but I am going to get another new set of wets for next season anyway so I was just going all out on these ones but yeah that was qualifying in a nutshell really so we headed back into the pits sadly it was only P11 which wasn't great but I guess I'll take it and now we need to just quickly get weighed in alright so boys P11 not great kind of struggled really with the wet slash dry conditions but next is heat one it's fully dry um both me and Pierre are actually on dry tires now so yeah we're, we're gonna see what we can do and hopefully we can have a pretty decent heat and yeah see what we can do basically so here we go for heat one race then I wanted to try and go full send really and just see what happens and see if I can get as far up the grid as possible. Obviously like I said with my inexperience with the Evo kit engine and now it's on drives obviously as you can see I didn't really know how it would go and also my setup just wasn't on point sadly it was okay but it was better than round two's one for sure but I just think it was a lot more to do but nevertheless we are going lights out here at Clay Pigeon Raceway for the Heat 1 race as you can see someone gets pushed off the grass so we immediately make a position but sadly also lose two because two people sent it down the inside of me as we head in towards turn one I took it quite easy there I definitely think I should have sent it more I just wanted to take it easy just get through turn one and the first lap really unlike in well round two where I completely binned it into the final corner as you can see there Patrick in LPR racing actually goes massively wide there he actually got a puncher for some unknown reason which really didn't help his chance whatsoever and he actually had to bail out of the race as you can see he's going very slowly there so he dives into the pits and we actually make the position up on him so now we just need to try and push on we've made the first lap work and we've lost a couple positions but we kind of gained them back as well from either retirement or people going off track so now we just have to try and work on catching the guys just ahead of me here and trying to get past them as quickly as possible and see how far up we can get as you can see we're really struggling with oversteer through that chicane section and we kind of struggled with that all day and we're just trying to find a good setup for that chicane section really as like I said I just really struggled massively as you can see a lot of people pulled away there just ahead except this one guy who I was starting to reel in I started getting used to the handling of the car a bit more and started to push a bit more harder the only thing that was going through my mind at this point whilst I was following this guy in the 26 car just ahead of me was just try and catch him, try and overtake him before the end of the race as you can see there was a timer on the left hand side of the start finish straight but you can't really see it on camera but obviously every lap I was just watching it count down and down and obviously it's when the timer goes out plus an extra lap so I was trying my utmost best to try and catch him and overtake this guy just ahead of me and I started to get used to getting a good exit out of the heaven section I found different lines throughout the day and really found a good one that worked for me 
out of the exit of that hairpin section. As you can see, we were just getting closer and closer, and I really started to reel him in nicely. And I kind of just had to try and sit behind him and see where it's going wrong. Obviously, this final set there isn't where you can really make an overtaking opportunity, especially that final corner. But I really tried to use some slipstream down the start finish straight, and I realised that he was going a bit wider through turn one, so I used that as my opportunity. I sent it down the side of him in towards turn one, and now into the chicane section, took a very nice line through there, and made the move stick on him very nicely. And that was really the only battle and overtake I got in this session, but due to retirements and obviously that lap 1 incident and getting past him, I actually made one position and finished in P10, so I'll take that. Wasn't the greatest race, but I still made a position from it, so yeah. And now we head back into the pits, and now we have to prepare for the pre-final. So guys, um, yeah, first race, okay, um, I started getting the hang of it just at the end, it was pretty difficult there to get used to from a pre-evo to a new evo kit, but I think I started getting used to it coming out the hairpin section and stuff like that, hairpin is my main point where I really need to get better at because I am shocking on the exit, but yeah. Change the, change the jet change your jet did you yeah all right cool. so yeah um next is the pre-final so i guess we'll just jump into that one and see how we do in that one then so now we head out of the pit lane for the pre-final as you can see nathan in lpr gets stuck coming out of the pit lane there so we actually made a couple positions there because of it he did actually manage to catch up just before the start so we do start around about p10 p9 position which is okay, I guess, so we just have to try and see what we can do on this lap one and throughout this race, as we once again go lights out here at Calais Pigeon Raceway, and we get a pretty decent start. It was a little bit better than last time. We actually tried to hold position. I actually tried to send it around the outside here, but we actually get clipped from behind and actually end up spinning, which was a massive shame for us there. Uh, um, I think that guy who clipped me and pushed me around through turn one actually did get a penalty for it, but as you can see, because I spun there, I kind of tried to overdrive a little bit to try and catch back up. Obviously, dead last because of it. And yeah, I really struggled with the setup once again throughout this pre-final and just pushed it as much as possible. Obviously, in round two, I actually ended up crashing the pre-final, so I really wanted to try and avoid that. But I pushed it a little bit too much, spun through the chicane section, luckily avoided hitting that barrier there in the middle of the chicane. But yeah, after that point, I started getting blue flags and I realised this isn't working, so I decided to dive into the pits, get out of the way of the front runners, and, well, take the hit and start last in the final, and hopefully that'll go a bit better than what this pre final did. Hello, boys, it's not going good at the moment. Um, I actually retired from the last race, as you may have seen. Uh, it wasn't great, understeering issues. Um, big man Nathan though thinks he uh, thinks he solved the issue now. We put some spaces on the front hubs, so hopefully the final will be a bit better. Let's just jump straight into that though and see what happens. So now we jump in our cart for the final time then for the day, for the final. This is where it all matters then. Obviously we are actually starting way down the grid. Um, actually down in P13, we actually got a couple positions because a couple people retired in the pre-final before me, so I didn't start dead last, but I was, I think, second to last or something like that. So, not exactly great, but we can still make this work as we skip to the start of the race and as we flip open the radiator flap, and we are about to get ready for the start of the final. Obviously, after almost crashing the pre-final, my first thought was just take it clean in towards turn one. If I lose a couple positions then that's it, but nevertheless we head off, lights out and away we go here once again for the final as we get overtaken by a couple people around the outside there. But the good news is we made it around turn one very nicely, we actually moved down to dead last so we shipped pretty much every position we had, but I can't complain too much, we made it around the corner, we still have 10 minutes plus an extra lap to make as many positions as we can as we follow the 68 car around the outside here, going to try and go around the outside through the horseshoe and somehow made that work coming out of the hairpin, which is a very nice move, so that is a position gained already as we head around the final corner to complete lap 1 
and my first thought was, well, we've made lap one, we've made an overtake, we did ship a couple positions in towards turn one on that first lap, but we're still in this, we're still in the chance to make as many overtakes as possible. As you can see, two people collided into turn one there on lap two, so now we've made another two more positions. So this is really good for us at the moment, as we're going to try and push on, see if we can catch down the two ahead of us, as we get sent down the inside by the 82 car there, as we actually keep him around the outside there very nicely and actually keep the move so very good defensive work for me there as we carry on through towards the final corner once again on lap two and as you can see i actually slid very badly out of final corner and i thought he would try and have a run on me here but luckily i managed to keep him behind me once again i seem to get very nice speed down the straight with the new evo kit which is very good and now we send it in towards the chicane section and once again a bit slightly for the chicane, like I said, I really struggled through that chicane section throughout the whole day. But as the day went on, I just got better and better and really fell at ease with the car at the end of the day, more than what I did at the beginning. But nevertheless, we have the 28 car just ahead of us who we battled in Heat 1. So my aim was to try and catch him. We managed to do it once before, so we can definitely do it again. I just have to be careful because there is a few people I overtook, obviously, on those first few laps who want to try and overtake me. As one of them sends it down the inside of me. We have a tiny bit of contact. He doesn't get the best of exits out of the airpin section. So we're going to try around the outside through the horseshoe. And now through this next corner, we're sending it down the inside. And we re-overtake him and make the move stick and keep our position. I don't really know how I managed to do that, but I will definitely take it any day of the week because that was some incredible battling and some incredible defensive work by me there. And now I just need to concentrate on trying to catch down the 28 car and the two others that are just ahead of him. So we still have a chance at this. We just really need to push on and try and catch him down as best as possible. And like I said, the setup was getting a little bit better during the day. But I just still struggled a little bit, which wasn't great, but I am going to be working on that more in the future with test sessions and stuff like that. And as you can see, there is a few spots of rain just coming down, so it wasn't enough to make the track massively slippery, but through the chicane section you'll see a bit later that it did make it a little bit slippery. And as you can see, in the barrier there is Nathan Bollard because of the yellow flags coming out once again for him who had another issue with his accelerator pedal which isn't ideal for him but that means we're up another position and we are catching down this 28 car very nicely as we skipped to where we're right behind him now battling him very nicely obviously we still have to be aware there is a couple people that are still behind me who I have pulled away from a little bit but I do still have to watch out because this guy could easily block us up just ahead and they could catch back up to us but nevertheless, I will try my best to get around the 26 car as quickly as possible all over the back of him. And he's just very slow through the horseshoe section. So I feel like that's where I could have a chance of overtaking him. And through the final corner, he was a tiny bit quicker. But I'm going to try and use my slipstream here as best as possible. Obviously, in the Heat 1 race, I overtook him through the first corner or through the chicane section as well. But it looks like he's learnt from his mistakes from Heat 1 because that turn 1 and especially the chicane section he took it much more better and with a lot more speed. I was noticing out of the hairpin section and especially into the horseshoe section as well I was definitely a lot quicker than him but he was just taking the right line so I couldn't really go around the outside of him because he was just hogging that inside line but I was super close to him all over the back of him as we come around the final corner once again he gets a much better exit than me i'm really struggling to follow him here even a couple laps later i was all over the back of him our exits out of the final corner was about the same but everywhere else i was probably a little bit quicker especially through sector two it was mainly first corner and the chicane section and the final corner we were about the same pace but as you can see as we come through the out of the hairpin section and into the horseshoe especially I was a lot quicker than him and really gaining time on him and now we're coming towards the end of the race so I really need to try and make this move work now or never as I was getting in his slipstream really taking a nice line through at turn one once again he gets about the same sort of exit as I try and look down the inside through the chicane section I get a very good exit this time and try and get in the slipstream of him and I was thinking about sending it but I thought I better not because I don't want to damage my car or his car and ruin both of our races 
as we're going to try and go around the other side, try and set ourselves up, see if we can do a cutback, but unfortunately we still can't. He's still defending really nicely from us as we head around the final corner. Once again, as you can see, he gets a much better exit out of that final corner compared to me. I just got a crack of oversteer, which wasn't ideal. Obviously, as we were coming to the end of this race, I was really thinking about just going full aggressive and seeing if I could just send it anywhere, any opportunity I would get. So I really took the chicane aggressively there. He gets a pretty decent exit, but I got much better exit compared to him. As we head in towards the hairpin, once again, I get a very good exit. I was thinking about just sending it around the outside through the horseshoe just to see what would happen. But I thought, no, I better not. I'm really close to him this time. So maybe I could set my move up for next lap as we head around the final corner once again. We get about the same exit out of the final corner. I lost a tiny bit of time compared to him, but I'm in his slipstream. Got a very good slipstream down the start finish straight as we head in towards turn one. I got a bit of oversteer through turn one, but so did he. As we send it in towards the chicane section once again, I got a very good exit once again. And this time, I'm going to send it down the inside of him into the hairpin section, run the curb just a little bit, but get a very good exit compared to him, and made the move stick down the inside of the hairpin. And into the horseshoe section, obviously that's where I was a bit quicker than him, so I just pulled away a little bit there, and we have made this move up into P12. So we did lose a couple positions, um, which wasn't ideal, but we gained them back, which was very nice, obviously through a couple incidents, and also through that overtake. But I'll take that, um, not the best of races, we could have definitely done a lot better and we did get stuck behind that number 26 cart for quite a while but I will definitely take it, we had a nice battle, we managed to do a pretty decent day with a well, brand new Evo kit that I wasn't really used to um, and I really had to try and use this day as a test really and just see what this Evo kit was like and how it was to drive. But now we come around the final corner, give a little OK sign to Peter and Rick to say that we have done it, made the move stick and finished the race in P12. So yeah, I will take that any day of the week. And now we head back into the pits and that rounds off our IKR round 3 day with our new Evo kit. And now we get in to be weighed once again. So the joke Nathan was showing you there about the Citroen C1 is I've got a Citroen C1, so yeah, he thought it was me, but it wasn't. All right, boys, we've just hit the road again. Um, yeah, interesting day. Um, not the best. It could have been better, but I'll take it. First time with an Evo kit, you know, it is what it is. Um, my man Peter here, who's driving on the way back, he did a cracking job today. Absolute banger. Went from P. Sick, well, P16 on the grid to then sadly having a bit of contact with someone and getting stuck all the way back to last. Managed to get back up into 21st and then managed to go from 21st to P15. So, an incredible job by him. It's a massive shout out to the boy himself. Um, but yeah, I guess I'll leave this video here. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to like and subscribe. But thank you for watching and goodbye.